webinar. The webinar is live now. I see Guy. I see Guy. There's Guy. I feel like this is Rumper Room. Okay. He is there. Um, what? You see me? Oh, yeah. Everybody's popping in all quickly. Okay. So I just had to log out and log in. That's all. Okay. So. Um, Much better. I'm I, hanging do, up back up. I don't see you yet, though. Oh, there's everybody. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, now, but we probably don't have Joe. Here's Ian. I see Hello, Joe. Ian. Ian? Hi. I'm here. What Joe's I found under a beautiful blossoming tree. Yeah, it's okay yeah. now. I got it going. You, you, yeah. you can't log. Okay. You have to I'm log right. in with the link, not the specific Zoom code for some reason. At least that's what I found. Yeah, you but, have to use your special link that's sent to only you. That's and, right. Um, and you're all in now, it looks like. We've got 10 participants. So where did they go? Ready. I've got you guys, but well, sorry, this is always supposed to be, this never goes like it should. Um, why don't I, oh, there you are. Okay, so I think everybody is here. Okay. okay. All right, I'm gonna start recording. We're recording. All right, well, great. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I'll call this meeting of the Board of Directors of the Community Television of Santa Cruz County to order. And it looks like it's 5.06 on, um, what's today, February 22nd. And would the secretary call the order? Yeah, Chair Lanier. I'm here. Yes. Uh, Director of Maziars. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Mannheim. Director O'Driscoll. Director Shaw. Director Gudger? Here. Director Granados, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Close enough. It's Christina Granados. I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Director Warren. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, oral communications, if we have any from the public uh, visiting, any person may address the board for the oral communications period. I don't see anything. So we'll move chair, on. Chair, do we have a, so if somebody from the public did want to comment, would they just raise their hand if they're on the public Zoom? Link? Yeah. Okay. I did mention to a former board member who was a colleague of uh, Dory Steinman that we were going to be honoring her today. So uh, I kind of let her know kind of last minute. But, um, Actually, that's a good, uh, that raises a good question. Those folks would not be visible to us. Is that right, Becca? But they're visible to you? Yeah, yes, they're visible to me and there are none now. But if we wanted okay. to make them visible, I could change them into a panelist if we want to. But but okay. they just can't join the meeting and appear here. Just so, so that we don't um, miss somebody who does want to, to visit or oh yeah, I or, can see. Want. So just okay. just Thanks, so you know, they should show up as attendees. Yes. On the participant panel. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you webinar. open up your participant panel, you can see attendees or zero, and if you click on I that. It'll, it. you'll see the list and then we could see their hands raised and we can answer them in order and I just click them off once you're talking to them and they go to the bottom and they could ask questions. Okay. Terrific. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We learn something every time. Um, no, okay. Thank you. Moving on to uh, number three, consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to the consent agenda or regular agenda. Anybody? Seeing none, uh, let's move to the consent agenda number four, approve the board meetings of, well, let's, I don't need to go through everything. Um, we have the board meetings of January 25th, approve executive committee meetings of January 29th, and approve recommendation of finance committee to accept January 2021 financial reports. Any comments on any of those? Okay, I'll consider a motion, uh, entertain a motion. Yeah, I just had a quick question. I mean, uh, a lot of times uh, finance committee director, uh, Chair Hall will uh, make comments on the, you know, now that I'm no longer on the finance committee, uh, I don't want to take up the full board's time too much by, uh, you know, asking a million questions. But if, if he had any uh, comments on on the financial reports, I, I'd love to hear them. There actually, there'll be ones on the next 
uh, well, a couple of quick things. Uh, we put some uh, additional funding or advertising costs went up because Becca reported that uh, we weren't getting uh, good responses to some of our ads for employees. So she had to pay for an, uh, an advertisement. Uh, it'll also be, there's be another report we got from her in terms of the agent or the financial report that'll be on her comments and I'll leave it for that. Uh, Tom presented his normal uh, report in terms of how we're doing on what's called facility equipment and use, which is one of our major budget items. We're still ahead. But what happened and the reason it went down and you may have seen it is the um, we had three offices vacate. And so we've uh, Becca reported that there is one one potential new one and also somebody has expressed interest in renting the studio so that number should go up next time. Those are the major aspects of this. There's one other aspect of payments uh, to satellite, which is another item on the agenda. So those are the highlights of it. Unless you had any questions, I'm glad to answer them. Um, no, that just about covers it. Um, I mean, I, I've some curiosity about another thing, but I'll, I could ask Becca online if I'm that curious. So um, with that, I'll thank you and I will make a motion uh, that we approve the items on the consent agenda as presented. Second. Joe Hall. All right, we have a, a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, aye. 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 We don't need a roll call, I don't think. Um, okay, that is approved. Consent agenda is approved and we'll move on to the regular agenda. Um, this is a remembrance of the contributions of former board member Dory Steinman, who is our Capitola representative for 11 years. Uh, we, this was called to our attention by Director Gudger, and it seemed appropriate to, I wasn't aware of her or her contributions. And so um, I wanted to just spend just a moment to learn about that. Um, anyone, either Keith or Joe, would you like to say anything? Well, Keith, why don't you go ahead and then I'll, I'll finish up because you knew her through productions. I know her through the board. So, yes, I worked with Dory quite a while until she asked that uh, we find a replacement. And that's how we got Larry, <laughs> which is great also. Uh, she was on the board through, as Joe will tell you, a very tumultuous period. Uh, we appreciated her being there, we appreciated that she had experience in video production, whereas many board members at that time didn't have professional experience. Um, I also worked with her, as Joe mentioned, on some productions. You may have seen in her obituary, she mentioned the Toby production. That was a couple of shows that we did. I think I directed those for her. So it was, uh, it was interesting times. It was a different community television, that's for sure. And so I'll turn it over to Joe. And and different is a pleasant way to say tumultuous. But uh, what was what you didn't mention, and I didn't realize, is she produced like a hundred and some odd uh, programs on uh, the second half of life, is I think what it was. And she produced a book. But what I remember about her, she was very quiet, and we'd have all these raging debates, and it would rage right over her. And her she raised her hand, and everybody had to stop and listen, because she didn't yell out or she didn't make this emotional stand. And one of the times I should have listened to her pretty carefully, and I told Keith and uh, some of the others about it, is the treasurer resigned for some reason. I can't remember what happened. And the, all of a sudden, I heard uh, uh, Dory say, well, I think we should nominate Joe Holland. I, I, at that point, I was so exhausted from the meeting, I wasn't paying attention. Somebody else seconded it and they voted on it. And I leaned over and asked her, what did, what did you nominate me for? Because I thought it was from committee. She thought, you're treasurer now. Didn't you hear me? And I said, no, because she talked pretty softly and everybody else was exhausted from whatever the big deal was in the day. So that's how I became treasurer. It was full, but uh, I used to walk her back to her car because our meeting place was in a location that uh, was not what I'd call, it's good for any two people to walk you know, back to car late at night because the meetings didn't go. And I'll keep this short because our meetings could go into 10 and 11 o'clock sometimes. And, um, and we used to talk about all sorts of different things about life. She was a wonderful person. And I enjoyed my time working with her on the board. 
and she brought stability to a pretty unstable situation. So Dory, I'm gonna miss you. Very nice, thank you, Joe. And um, that was a good move to nominate you as treasurer. That was uh, very crisp. <laughs> on her part. So we're, we're indebted to her for that. And as well as all the productions she did, I had no idea, it's pretty amazing. So yeah, long life well lived, a Renaissance woman, uh, if there ever was one. Thank you. Um, let's move to number eight, considered finance committee recommendation to approve satellite fee increase and repayment, approve the increase to $2,500 starting February 1st of this year. Um, Joe, who speaks to this? Joe, is that- I think Be Becca would be the best and Tom and Keith have been the most imminent in, most closely involved with it. And I think Becca can probably sum it up. We've talked about it once before uh, at our special meeting, but Keith or Tom, why don't you, uh, uh, I don't know if you want to start up or Becca, why don't you start and then they can add comments and I'll shut up. <laughs> okay. Well, um, uh, our original contract with satellite included $1,500 a month as a management fee. And they over the and they were also supposed to receive 17 or um, uh, a profit a, a little bit of profit 25 percent of everything we made over seventeen thousand dollars a month, and they calculated that to be you know enough for them to make it worthwhile for them to help us out, and we have never reached seventeen thousand dollars a month, so we can we just haven't yet, and we've gotten as high as fifteen. And um, I, I, I believe it will go higher now that the things have changed for co-working. But that, be that as it may, uh, Barbara wanted to raise the, her rate of 1500 to, to 25 in order to um, get the, the money that she thought she would have gotten through profit and a management fee. And so um, we are, we've entered into negotiations with the new contract with her because that our contract currently says 1500. So in order to, um, we, would, we would like to give it to her. And so we need your approval to do that. And we're only asking you to approve it until we finish the contract. And then we'll come back again with another request. I'll note that the finance committee talked about this on Friday and recommends approval of the, of the increase. Correct. Tom or Keith, do you want to mention anything in addition? I don't really have anything to add. I know um, we have a sort of related discussion that we'll have in closed session on lease negotiations. And, and uh, but I, I think Beck has covered it pretty well. Okay. Andrea? Um, question. Uh, so the way it's phrased is repayment. So is this, is this just going forward or are we, um, going back, or is this retroactive? Is this retroactively active? <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> if, well, if. she wanted to raise it earlier, and um, we we started this. Uh, we started. She started. Uh, well, in we wanted to go back to February, and she has requested we pay her four months previous to that, but. Um, I didn't think that we had put that on the agenda. I think that was. I I, I think the um, retroactive the, the, one was, the retroactive is just for just February. February because we're for February, yeah. in for it, it's too late. She's already been paid for February, so the retroactive is just for the month of February. Correct. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, I wanted to say that what we're basically doing here is to smooth the negotiations, we would like to go on and start paying her this amount so that it works, we have a better footing for our negotiations. And that's why it's on the agenda now as opposed to when the, the contract is finalized. Um, Larry. Yeah, I, 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 maybe I missed it in there. Is there any sort of a board uh, resolution or anything like that that goes with this or is this just a verbal approval i think it would be a minute a, a motion would do it okay i think a motion and we should vote we should probably have a roll call vote um, correct on it um anybody else otherwise i'd entertain a motion to um consider the approve the finance committee recommendation to approve the to approve the satellite fee increase and repayment 
I would move approval. We have a motion by Director Mannheim. I'll second. Second by Director Gedger. Let's have a roll call on this. Okay. Uh, Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Director Gudger. Yes. Director Warren. Yes. Director Maziars. Yes. Director Mannheim. Yes. Director Hall. Yes. Director Granados. Yes. Director Laurent. Yes. Chair Lanier. Yes. Okay. Approved unanimously. Thank you all. Um, this is a fun one. Number nine, authorize the purchase of up to 25 production kits, not to exceed $43,000 funded by youth grant for student video production classes. Um, Becca. Yeah, so um, we're very excited that the Youth Grant Committee has been meeting for several months and we've put together a new sort of pandemic program that addresses the challenges that students are facing because they're home alone. <laughs> well, not entirely alone, but they're not in school in a group. So uh, we couldn't do our usual youth grant because it, it requires a classroom a teacher with um, knowledge of television production and our goal there was for kids to um, learn enough to go out to, to learn whether they like video or not, but also to go out and be job ready, be able to get a job in the business. So now, um, since that's not possible, we thought we might be able to reach a lot more kids if we took some of those parameters away. So what we've come up with is a temporary um, plan where kids, we give kids a kit to make video that's pretty intuitive. So we've got we've made a selection of products that are just really easy to use that we think they can use on their own and create video. And our goal is um, we have several prongs to this. We want them to experiment and play and learn if they have an interest and an aptitude in video. So we can we can sort out or they can sort themselves out as who's interested in this as a career path and who's, who's not, <laughs> because the facts are friendly. It'd be great if they find out they're not now before they spend a lot of money to figure out this is not a good thing. So um, we are gonna provide a fun a kit that I'll describe in a minute. We're going to give it to groups of kids who have some, some supervisor, either a teacher or a tutor, or maybe the Boys and Girls Club or the Girl Scouts or things like that. And they will get these kits each their individual so they can use them on their own. They will make their videos and um, uh, upload them to us and we will eventually put them on TV. So they, they get the equipment for a month and they have to make a two minute video with it that we can use. And then they can also experiment and do whatever they want with the, with the equipment and you know, figure out what they like. So they might try claymation or animation or stop action or news reports or PSA styles or whatever they want. We just want them to play and get them to be interested in digital media and see if they have a knack for it. So um, we wanna buy 25 kits because that would outfit a full classroom at one time. Or we could, or, or something like the Boys and Girls Club or 4-H, something really big. And then we might also outfit like just some homeschooling pods or, or um, smaller groups. Like we're working with Save Our Shores to find a group of kids because they do, they have, they go and partner with organizations like with schools and teach a science class, sort of like Sea Odyssey does. And then kids are responsible to do a report after, or it's a, some sort, they have to do a report or some kind of activity. They have to take action. And so what Save Our Shores is hoping is that they will take action with our kits and do some sort of uh, report on whales or plankton or whatever they whatever they're studying at the time um, with Sea Odyssey and uh, Save Our Shores. So those are all coming. But right now we have a UCSC teacher who has a pod of homeschoolers who were Montessori school kids. And she's got four of them. It's a great group because it's two elementary kids and two junior high kids. So we can um, outfit them and we can this is our beta test. So we can see how it works for them. And she's a very engaged um, newer teacher and she's willing to let us know the barriers that the different age groups face and um, what, what they like best and what doesn't work for them. And we can find out from parents what they think, because it's a nice small group. We can have a lot of contact with them and get some really good information. So we can fine tune our program as we go ahead. 
And when once we get excited students, I want to be able to put the gear in their hands like pretty quickly. So um, I want to buy it all. I don't want to buy it all now, but I'd like you to approve the full package. And as we gain students, we'll buy more gear. So we'll never have gear sitting on the shelf not being used, but we will have it ready. We'll have the money approved and we'll be able to get it. And I can usually get it in about a week. So even if we had a big classroom, we could get them gear in, in a week or so, and that would be good. I don't want them to like for the semester to end before we get them the gear. So that's why we're asking for the approval now. And it's a nice, it's a fun, a fun, easy thing. It's an iPad, which is easy to use. The micro, we'll put it together. So the microphone plugs in and they've got a nice microphone and iPad and a very nice tripod. And it all comes in a backpack so they can't lose it. And we've got a system for, I, you know, marking it and everything. In fact, the iPads will be engraved with our name on them. So we won't lose those. And um, we've got documents for the parents to sign and that sort of thing. And we hope to start with this simple beta test with giving it to the kids, letting them have some fun, giving us some video to put on TV, and then they get something on television, which they're very excited about. And, um, and then we can expand it as we're going to, we have ideas for the future, like adding a community group online somewhere, like a private one, not where anybody else could get in, but where kids can, they can have some peer to peer interaction, like coach each other, answer questions, ask questions. And our idea is to get some of the university students to monitor, to take on, a, we'll get some interns to monitor the group and answer questions and, you know, watch out for you know, bullies and that sort of thing. And then um, we wanna ultimately maybe add a contest so kids can kind of compete and we can give prizes for the best videos and different categories, but it's like too much for us to flesh out now. We wanted to just kind of get rolling and see from teachers, once we get a few groups through, we can then approach the, the leaders of those groups and say, would this, would this inspire the kids? Would it be too much? Would they like to do it? And we get more feedback from people who know what they're doing with kids. So that's where we are. And so I'm, I'm hoping that you can approve this for me so I can order gear tomorrow for the four students we have online. All right. Thank you very much. Um, uh -huh. Entertained at Joe. Oh, I, I like this. I mean, having had two kids, it's always kind of a, uh, you worry if you give something to somebody, but we've had so much trouble engaging the other program you had getting the the teacher and this and that this seems like a it fits more into kind of the age group we're trying to meet and i, I kind of like the idea and i'm glad you're giving it a try uh I'm, i really think it's a, a great approach to doing something a little simpler that's a, than we've tried before and so go for it thank you director granados so this is really exciting. It sounds awesome. And I really love the passion and creativity I hear, Becca, in, in just putting this together. Um, and I can certainly think of a bunch of ways that hopefully I could support in this. But I, I'm just curious, what is the age group that you're targeting? I know this is a youth grant, but are you thinking primarily, because uh, it sounds like you, you're, you're thinking of a pretty broad range from elementary school all the way through college. Am, am I hearing that right? Well, we're all the way through high school. Um, we would certainly entertain college, but we, um, and that's something that maybe David could help us on. We know, I noticed at Cabrillo there, I haven't seen there's a lot of video education there. Um, there is digital media though, so maybe it's rolled into that. And UCSC has an excellent film program. So I don't think that they need our help. I'd like to get them more involved in the mentoring aspect of it. I know that, um the Watsonville Center, I, I can think of one professor that might be interested, but I mean, that's that's helpful. So you're thinking K okay, through like elementary through 12th grade right now. Yeah, but if you had it, if you, yeah, but I would be happy to entertain older kids if you, if you have a group. I was just thinking UCSC's got, they've got very nice studios and nice gear. So I don't think we need to help them. But if there's, there are other groups that, I don't know everything. So if you know a group that could use it, we've got the, we have the funds to do this. And that's something I wanted to mention to you all. And it's in my report, but we get money from the county every year for this reason. And it's the only thing we can use it for. So we want to, we want, so if there are more kids and we can buy more gear. Director Warren. Yes. Uh, you know, I think this is an exciting idea. Um, 
Uh, Becca, you're, you're right. Uh, video production is really rolled into digital media, but I don't, don't think that it holds a candle to UCSC for their no, involvement. But, um, you know, getting production equipment like this that's simple into, into the hands of youth is, is a marvelous idea. And I think that there can be a lot come out of it. Thank you. Um, Director Maziarz. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, Becca and highlighted that the fact for our newer board members that this is money that's earmarked. And as, as Tom says, you know, we've had mixed, we, we have had three previous grantees and, and um, had some success that way, but it hasn't been as, as it's been a little bit harder to find, um, you know, find groups that meet all of our criteria. So I'm really excited by this, this prospect. And, and I did want to, you know, you, you know, in your introductory remarks, you mentioned something about um, the, you know, people looking to, to do this as a career, but I, I think I'll just mention that, you know, in the world that we live in now, even if I think just uh, like, like coding, people see coding now as a kind of a general purpose skill, even if you're not going to be a software developer, yeah. having some skills in coding can, can be um, useful in a lot of different areas. So I think it's the same thing with um, digital video and that I think mm -hmm. as it, it, we're in a much more re media rich environment, I think people in all sorts of different um, fields, social sciences or, you know, business um, will be, will find these sorts of skills useful. So um, I'm hoping that we can get this equipment into hands, especially, you know, and a lot of kids these days, I've been amazed what my daughter can do with her iPhone, right? Um, so I think a lot of kids these days have devices. So I'm hoping that we can also um, get these into the hands of some low-income folks. You know, oh, yeah. I, I edited uh, the, I've been doing, involved with the, um, the teen fashion show. And I know we had some, some, uh, really amazing submission last year because of the pandemic everybody shot their own footage and uh there were some submissions from south county which i don't know what they were shooting on but they looked like they were you know not iphones they were very low quality and and they're, they're wonderful pieces and such but they weren't well represented so i'm hoping that we can also uh get this equipment into the hands of people who may not have access to iphones and ipads um and even people who have those, you know, having a good tripod, having a good microphone will certainly um, allow them to do quality of production that's beyond what they could do with just their their stock devices. So. Well, I think you're right. And I think that storytelling is really a key skill these days, no matter how you're doing it. The ability to tell a story it will help you in business and life. <laughs> so it's a, good, it's a good thing to learn. It also makes you collect your thoughts and put them down in an orderly way. <laughs> So, and the other thing I want to mention for our um, our new representative, our new board member from Watsonville, is we do have gear at Digital Nest and also at Watsonville High School. So kids in South County do have access to really nice gear that we provide. So, and then now it'd be great if we could get it in the little in the little hands of actual of more kids out there, and that's that's why I'm hoping Christina can help with. Tom, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to add, you, you mentioned that we get this money from the county um, every year. And uh, Becca and I, for the rest of the board, I wanted the, them to know that we went and talked with um, our county contact, walked, talked this through with them and sent something to, to, the, to him to give to the board since this is something that they approve and um, got very positive feedback. So they like this idea as well. Terrific. Um, I'll entertain a motion to authorize the purchase of these. I'll move approval of the purchase. Second. Motion, and motion by Director Maziar, second by Director O'Driscoll. All those in favor say aye. 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 I, I, do we need a. I think we should do, um, I think on general gov, we should do roll call. Roll call for instance. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Director Gudger. Yes. Director Warren. Yes. Director Maziars. Yes. Director Granados. Yes. Director Mannheim. Yes. Director Hall. Yes. Director Laurent. Yes. Chair Lanier. Yes. All right. Approved unanimously and so ordered. Um, now we'll have a discussion of committee assignments with new directors. Who can lead this? I'm not. 
as familiar with some of the committees, but we each sit on uh, different committees, um, at least one or two, and some of the meetings are very infrequent. Um, who can speak to what we have here? Well, I'd like to mention that I've, I've talked to David, who's uh, one of our new board members, about a specific area, and uh, he has something he wants to discuss with us, so I'd like to turn it over to him. All right, great, Director Warren. Um, well, I think we're all very aware of, of how COVID has um, affected all organizations, but especially the classroom, and especially teaching and learning. And I think that uh, along with hard times like this, there is, there is opportunities. And um, most teachers that are working, trying to do online teaching are having real struggles. Some of them are being very innovative and um, parents are having enormous struggles. My neighbor has five, five kids, they're all in school and they're all being um, uh, taught online. And here is this, amazing use of technology, but there is much to spread around about it and educate others about it. And I think that there's many different angles of approach here, but Keith and I've been talking about the, the possible need of a committee, uh, an education committee that's really, um, uh, really investigating this and coming up with uh, strategic strategies and so forth for addressing some of these needs. And I would be willing to be on that committee and uh, Keith has, has volunteered and uh, who, who else might like to join us and is this appropriate? Um, I think it's very appropriate. Sounds like a very, very good idea. Any other directors wish to chime in or participate? Actually, I, I don't, but I think it's a good idea. And, and when the pandemic started, I had this idea, look, we have a couple of TV channels that are here during the day. And it was a great resource. But how you connect that with the education system, having been on a school board, I tell you, is so many steps, it just the thought wore me out. But uh, <laughs> I can't see how it can't be a good idea to somehow get something on where the kids can go look at a TV set that has an exciting kindergarten teacher or exciting second grade teacher for an hour or two to give the teachers a break. And it just seems like a natural and how you interface it with the, the education system and how it's structured is a phenomenal challenge, but I think it might work out. I don't know how, but uh, I, I commend you for thinking about it. And I think it's more important to work on that. We have a, a lot of other little committees, but they very rarely meet. And this is something dealing with problems today and possibilities today. I think we might want to tap Elizabeth for this because um, she's in the, she's on the, um, she works for the office, the County Office of Education. So she would have some, she would have some clout. We could probably get some real information from, from inside with her and she would have perspective that we don't have. Um, David, you have the perspective, but another, another, uh, another person in, in um, education at the primary level would be good as well. And you know, Christina, I don't wanna volunteer somebody like I got volunteered by Dory, but <laughs> I was gonna throw out the thought to Christina because over the years, I found that some of the education innovations we've had have been more readily adopted and used and and there was a higher interest level in the Pajaro district than there's been in uh, the other districts like Aptos has one of our grants for a uh, video production program and there have been other classroom and so I don't know I just thought I'd throw out and see if you would like to 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 kind of give a representation for the South County, because I've just been impressed over the years, including my time on the school board, that the Pajaro District has bigger challenges, but they actually seem to approach them in a positive way. Let's, Which, let's hear from Christina. Sure. I mean, this is a committee that I would certainly love to be a part of. I personally am more uh, focused on higher education kind of work, but I certainly 
interface with the Pajaro Valley um, Unified School District, mostly through my census work, but I definitely have folks that I could reach out to, um, some teachers that I know. So I, I think that's really exciting. exciting. And I, I would echo that. I think that because sometimes the needs that are having to be addressed are a little more complex, there's a lot more sort of creativity and a little bit more of a enthusiasm in terms of trying things that are new and different. So um, I would I would share in that observation um, and I would certainly be happy to be a part of that committee. Great, mm -hmm. terrific, thank you. And I apologize for volunteering you, but it seemed to be a natural when I started thinking about what uh, Keith had started talking about with David. So anyhow, just a thought, but I'm not gonna volunteer anybody for anything else. That's just one thought. <laughs> no apologies. And I have to say, I did hear you. So I didn't actually just not hear you and then suddenly got volunteered. So you were fair in letting me know that you were volunteering. <laughs> well, I wanted to point out that we don't have an action item on the agenda for this month. So what we were talking about is we'll get the interested parties together and come up with a proposal to bring to the March board meeting. Okay, terrific. Um, Thank you. Should we move on to the oral report of the executive director? Okay. And that's in your packet too, if you wish to follow along. Okay, I'm gonna just, okay. So uh, this report um, for new board members, I always report on the previous month so that I have all the numbers. And uh, so this month is for, this uh, reports for January, the first month of 2021. So, um, we um, we have applied for the California Relief Grant, which I've reported to you before. Um, our application was moved to round two, so um, we didn't have to do anything. We're just in the round two part, so we're just waiting. Um, we're eligible for a grant of fifteen thousand dollars, and we are just in the we're just in the queue. The EDL EIDL is the same. Our status is still funding, and we are in the queue. Uh, for co-working, oh, I'm sorry, I think I, I did not say this is the financial part of my report. Um, for co-working, our, um, our break-even number in my report says 10,000, but it actually, we lowered it for the pandemic budget to 8,000. And in January, we only earned 65, um, uh, 100, oh, 100 dollars, which is um, because as Joe mentioned, a whole bunch of people left at the end of December. So we are filling those offices now. And um, uh, that is where we are. I think, we'll, I think we are gonna meet our goal uh, for February though. Under paid services, uh, our government meeting service provided coverage for 15 government meetings in January and produced 10 webinars. And we also did some webinars that were also um, telecast. We are doing the public health conferences now, which are, um, it's a great service and um, it is, uh, we're, we're happy to do it and it, it's great to get paid to do it as well. Um, we're currently um, hosting those uh, press conferences twice a week now. Under facilities and equipment, we had a COVID-19 exposure in um, at the, uh, right at the end of December. So in January, we um, had a customer who learned he had COVID. He didn't have symptoms and he was in the building by himself on a Sunday. A couple of people came in though and he talked to them. So we had to contact everybody who was directly exposed. We alerted all of our, our whole membership including the CTV membership and the co-working membership. We closed for a day and had a special team come in and uh, clean the office and they used an antivirus fog thing to um, make sure they got everywhere and all the cracks and crevices. And uh, we had a lot, of, a lot of protective gear in place. We have UVC lights in our air conditioning system or our HVAC system. And we also have air purifiers, several of them on the floors. And we use UVC lights in the offices after people leave. And uh, the good news is no one was sick. No one became sick and the customer has recovered and is back at work. In our, um, our staff report, um, 
our staff members, um, every year the California requires that people take a sexual harassment prevention training, and uh, we have completed that for this year. We've hired two new video technicians, and one of them is uh, one of our previous interns from last year from UCSC. So we're really happy that that has created a little bit of a pipeline for great employees. And um, I have a couple of staff notes uh, this month. Our webinar service really took off and we have five new clients now who just, just came in the last month or so. And they've all come from recommendations from our other original clients. And um, that is thanks to Ian Barry, our co-working manager. He's taken over the management of the service. He does all the orientations for new clients now and all the scheduling. And he hosts actually the, um, the more difficult meetings, he does the hosting. And he also trains our government technicians to host meetings. And um, we are so busy now that Ian is training two, two of our technicians as we speak. And they'll be doing, they'll be learning not only to do the government meeting service for video for the television, but also to do the webinars as well. So I just wanna commend Ian for, this is not the job he signed up for, but he took it on and he has done it so well that people are referring people to us. So that, that's a really a great testament to his good work. And also uh, this month we received, or in January, we received a hundred dollar donation from a couple who wrote me and said that they had a family member who was being honored by the board of supervisors and they had wanted to see that meeting and couldn't because one of them was in the hospital. So they called Victor and he uh, went back and found the meeting and made a copy of it and sent it to them. And they were so happy. They sent me a nice note about Victor and a donation for CTV. So I just want to thank Victor for his great work for the community. He's always, he's wonderful with the public. He's just the best. And so a little report on our youth grant, which you're very familiar with now. Um, we continue to work with Save Our Shores. We, um, had, we, we had talked to one teacher, but it didn't work out for her this semester. So we'll talk to her again and Save Our Shores is looking for other teachers. And we did, um, we are, uh, we have found a, another teacher through UCSC, which I've already reported on. And, um, and I've already talked to you about the youth grant equipment. So I guess I don't need to talk to you about that either. So that's my report for January. All right, let's see, I'm back. Um, thank you very much for that. I really have not um, nothing much to report. My, I, I wanted I, to give I, everybody- Can I make a comment on that? Yes, please. Yeah, sorry, I, um, Becca and everyone else, I just wanna let you know that in the legislature right now, there's some um, potential legislation that may make the virtual meetings permanent even after we go um, to in-person, which we, we predicted like a month into this around here. We're like, uh, the, the Pandora's box has been open. It's not going away. <laughs> so, you know, that that's something to look for. And, you know, we were kind of looking, I mean, from our environment is different, but everyone's going to be, you know, it's going to be a big, a big lift for folks when they have to go back and do the virtual meetings. So, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for community television to kind of go in there and, you know, we're not yeah. using you now, but we may in the future for that. <laughs> I mean, but when I say we, I mean me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just to let you know, it's not, it, it hasn't been passed yet, but I, I, there's a lot of, a lot of traction for it. So that's great to hear. I kind of suspected that people would really enjoy this staying at home and doing the meetings and once it's all ironed out and you figured out how to do it and how to get a background how to put people's names on things it, it actually is really nice and it's recorded so there's you know there's documentation I, i'm happy that's great thank you for that mm -hmm. and you know i actually participated in one of the webinars that ian did it was in the live oak parking program there were two of them the last one had 119 people and I was thinking what that would be like in person. It would be more interesting there, but there, everybody got a chance to talk. Nobody got a chance to grandstand and everybody got their opinion out and it went very well. The only hitch wasn't anything to do with CTV as the supervisor who was running the meeting had a bad connection, which was kind of interesting, but everybody worked through it. But I, I was impressed at how much information came out from people and nobody was able to dominate it with the little timer on. So it was fascinating to watch. Oh, that's great. Well, I, I will um, just reiterate my um, 
thanks and admiration for Ian's work and for Victor too. I mean, that's really great to have those folks with us and just doing what they do. So thanks for calling that out. They've been really good to adapt to this weird way of working. They've that's hard for them in many respects, but they've really raised, risen to the occasion. That's great. Um, really, I have nothing much more to add. I just wanted to include on, uh, our calendar for the coming year so directors know sort of what's what's the meeting, when the meetings are, and, and what sort of the, is the schedule. I also hope to send out uh, calendar invites to everybody um, in advance so that'll show up on your calendars. And I have meant to do that for this meeting, but I wanted to make sure that the calendar that we do have is accurate. Uh, Tom, Director Mannheim. Yeah, um, yeah, just, sorry, just uh, one note. Um, I think if I remember correctly from the Finance Committee meeting that the county is asked to get our budget earlier this year. So oh, we'll be right, bring, yeah. actually bringing that in March okay. next month. Okay, uh, thanks for that. I'll make a note of that. Um, okay, let's see, I scroll back to my agenda. Um, any, well, that is appropriate right there, staff request for, board staff request for specific items. So we'll have a budget item on the agenda next month. Um, any announcements, different announcements? Anybody want oh. to make? Well, one thing real quickly, I don't want to belabor it, but Keith, and uh, when you're when you're working on the committee, I already talked to the county superintendent of education when the whole uh, COVID shutdown happened about CTV. They were so overwhelmed he was, I just dropped it. But I think the county office would, would be really interested in taking a lead. So Elizabeth could probably help you, but I wouldn't be shy about talking to the superintendent. They're looking for ideas. And I think we're into it enough now that um, they might be more receptive other than thinking of it as just more work. I did talk to the superintendent at this, right after you alerted me to that, you had mentioned it in that meeting, I followed up with them, but they were just overwhelmed, like you say, at the time. So maybe it is good to touch base again. Okay, um, this stage, um, we will, I guess, adjourn this meeting temporarily and go to a closed session. Is that right? What's the Correct. protocol for doing that? Yes. Ex the protocol is exactly what you said, Guy. We adjourn, we will now adjourn this meeting, go into closed session, and then at the end of the closed session, we'll Actually, I guess at the next meeting, we'll have our report out. Is that correct? No, you report out what happened at the end of this meeting uh, in terms of what happened. So what you did, you, you close this meeting, you open the closed session, you close the closed session, and then Guy makes an announcement of whatever is in terms of uh, actions taken in a very general sense. And the then question. you adjourn the overall meeting. Okay. Director is that Mr. right, Janice? Larry? So, so that sounds right okay. to me, as I recall. Um, how are we going to do this technically? Are we going to, I don't think we got another link for a separate meeting. Um, I know Becca can tell if there's any attendees. Is there a way to, to lock out attendees? Yes, there is. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there, they, you can't can lock. Come and they, they can't join the meeting unless I admit them. Well, no, no, no. You have to, you, you can actually lock the meeting. Just oh, okay. so you know, we do this. So if those, if you go to participants, mm -hmm. go to those, that little ellipsis down at the lower right, the three, do you see that on the participant window that pops up? Yep. You see the three dots? Does it say lock lock webinar? Meeting? Yeah. So I can just lock it? Yeah. Lock webinar. Cool. And, and stop recording. No, yes. I'm going to stop recording as soon as you adjourn to closed session. Okay, so, right um, good. We're in agreement. We'll adjourn our regular session and uh, retire into a closed session. OK. Is that okay, correct, Larry? Yes, just yeah, just say no. Closed session was held. No reportable action was taken. Okay, we are we're closed session. Again. Closed. We are now back in. Becca has to unlock session. it first. Be Becca has to unlock it. Oh, we are. We're recording. I'll unlock the meeting. Yeah. Uh, just to let in all those okay. boards that are out there waiting. <laughs> yes. No one's out there, but we've unlocked it. Uh, we are are back in our regular session. We've completed a closed session. No action was taken. 
um, on negotiations. And uh, with that, I will on, um, entertain a motion to adjourn. I move adjourn, but. Director Gudger. And we have a second. I'll second. And Tom, with Director Mannheim. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Yay. Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Um, this was a, a long one, but I think it's important background that we have as we move forward. And thank you for your patience. And we'll see you all in four weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye, bye. Take bye. care. Bye.